Afghanistan is a land of contradictions, as breathtakingly beautiful, poetic, and generous as it can be ferocious and unsparing. This is both an inspiration and a challenge for an artist. I felt that no representation of paintings from Afghanistan would be complete without seeking to portray something of its landscape, people, and history. In the midst of Afghanistan's present lie the many layers of its past, ancient forts, shrines, and mosques, and a people with a deep sense of tribal loyalty and national pride. My paintings seek to present something of the resilience and strength of the Afghan people today, and the enduring beauty of this ancient land. One of the ways I work in the field is to do quick sketches of people I meet to try and break the ice and help them understand why I am there. I've done this with soldiers and civilians alike, and it has enabled me to collect a series of portraits and to listen to their stories. It's an amazing place. Huge sense of humour and kindness in it. I think of this series as the faces of Afghanistan. I first went to Afghanistan as an embedded war artist in 2009. Since then, I've worked with several regiments across Helmand province. The traditional role of the war artist has always been to depict scenes of military action, and several of my paintings seek to show the extraordinary courage of our soldiers and the difficult conditions under which they work. This painting shows soldiers going out on patrol. You can see, amidst the farmers and children inhabiting the scene, the soldiers with metal detectors searching for improvised explosive devices. This image was made in 2009 in Sangin, one of the most dangerous areas in Afghanistan. My paintings seek not only to reveal the drama of military action, but also the day-to-day -day lives of British and Afghan soldiers involved in this struggle. Battling with thoughts, fears and emotions is as much a part of soldiering as battling with the enemy. In this painting, soldiers wait for first light, preparing to leave the compound walls and face the danger without. You can almost feel the tension, apprehension, fear and comradeship as they gather their resolve and swap thoughts of home and loved ones for the task ahead. War carries with it terrible consequences, whether for soldiers, civilians or their families. I've sought to try to show something of this in my work, the physical and psychological impacts of conflict. In this work, I show a series of images of an unmade bed at various times of night or day. This is to try to convey something of the effects of post-traumatic stress disorder on returning soldiers and their families as they wrestle with nightmares, flashbacks, depression, medication, anger and guilt, and ultimately try to find a way through. For those who don't survive, there is the pain of loss felt by their loved ones for the rest of their lives. This large painting is a commemorative piece which pays tribute to the ultimate sacrifice that so many soldiers have made. This soldier was killed on the last day of his tour 
and the words painted over his portrait come from a letter he wrote to his parents to be read in the event of his death. Please trust me, no matter what the circumstances of my death, no matter how fast, how slow, I am strong. My only suffering will be the realization that I will not see my family again. I will not suffer from fear or pain. Such feelings will not touch me. He is, however, only one of many. Behind the image of this ghost-like figure, we can see photographs of all the British soldiers killed in this conflict up to November 2012. This is my main memorial to the fallen. I've called this exhibition Before the Dawn, partly to convey a sense of uncertainty about what the new day will reveal. This painting shows a drawdown from a military outpost whilst Afghans help themselves to discarded building materials. What will they build out of these ruins? What Afghanistan will build for its own future remains to be seen. The way I work in the field is to use charcoal, sketches, watercolours and a camera to begin compositions, which I then finalise into paintings back in my studio. In this scene, I am working out the beginning of a painting about Afghan AIDS community-led microhydro power project in a village in Badakhshan. Since I've been sitting here, they've actually moved up and beyond which is quick work. It looks very hard, backbreaking work though. So I'm going to extend the composition up to this cliff face to include it. And try and get a rhythm going through all their picks. It's not actually something we see so much in our country any longer. It's a whole community getting together for the benefit of all. Um, this young boy keeps on looking at me as if, have you finished yet, can I have a break? So I quite like him looking back out at the spectator. And then you've got two elders sitting here, one who is on the bank right there, looking down on everyone, and the other who is sitting sort of at the bottom here, and I think looking down the river, almost as if he's looking into the past or the future. Back in the studio, I work from these materials to produce the final painting. I've called this painting Alchemy, not only because there is something ancient and mysterious about the scene, but also because the women are, in a way, turning base substances into precious ones as they are making charcoal briquettes for sale. They run this business collectively to provide extra income for their households. Whether these kinds of productive community endeavours can work at the national level will depend, in part, on finding political solutions to heal the country's deep divisions. Here we can see an elders' shura, or meeting, held after months of planning and security clearance in Sangin in 2009. Painting this scene was intimidating. Some of these men were Taliban and stared at me with open hostility. But as an artist, it presented a wonderful challenge full of color, intrigue, defiance, and dignity. The fact that these shuras were able to take place is a testament to the British Army's success in keeping communication lines open in an effort to bring peace through dialogue. Four years later, the British Army is handing over this role to the Afghan National Security Forces that it has trained. Here, we can see a football match between British and Afghan soldiers. Two months before I witnessed this scene, Captain Walter Barry was shot 
whilst playing football by one of the soldiers he was training. I painted this to show something of the courage to trust again, in spite of those who seek to undermine it. Afghanistan is not just a country of men and war. It is also a country of girls that love to dance, of children that want to go to school and strive to learn. Much of my focus is on children, as with nearly half of the population of Afghanistan under the age of 14, they are the future of this country. At the center of this painting, we see the universal tenderness of parent to child, surrounded by the grieving figures of friends and family. In this work, I seek to illustrate not only the cost of war, but also the human care and resilience of a people who do not give in. What does this girl see of the world? What will her new dawn bring?